you can see me. And we're live. We're live. 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 So we've definitely been uh, libating, enjoying conversation. Well, we had to wait for it to get dark, proper dark. Yeah, dark enough to where we could actually use our lights and yeah, use our lighting effectively. Um, but what I mean, so today is today is mixed drinks. Mixed drinks. What what what'd you make for us today? But first, hey guys, this is name pending. Hey, this is name pending. Um, this name. He's keeper. I'm Mike Culberson. That's Pearl. That's Cabo. We got Toby. That's October. Bo's inside. He said it's too hot for him. Fuzzy Potato said abandoned screw you. him. Yep. It, it's fine. It's it's a process. But yes, we have mixed drinks. So what did you make for us tonight? We got two. So we have Blue Hawaiian. Easiest way I can describe Blue Hawaiian, it's, it's very much a colorful pina colada with more Hawaii flavor. Okay. That's a blue Hawaiian. That's what I have here. Very good. With my custom cup I got for Father's Day. And then my other cup that was given to me, gifted by someone, is another really good drink. It's a uh, rum punch. Another very dangerous drink because both are very, very smooth to the point you're like, I'm good. I'm good. Blackout. Okay, do you want to outline the ingredients that you use? Okay, so we got rum for his. It's rum, cit- rum, citrus, um, lime flavoring. It's, it's a lime spritzer. And then you have, um, it's a red, red sauce. It's a, I can never pronounce the name properly. I have a photo of it. Um, the Blue Hawaiian, we have rum, vodka. Simple syrup. I'm going to have to pull up the freaking list. I had it. It's here. Oh, man. It's like you don't even know how to do that. <sighs> All right. So here we go. The Blue Hawaiian, sweet and sour, uh, Kira Q, pineapple juice, light rum, so a clear rum, a vodka, citrus juice, and simple syrup. That's the Blue Hawaiian. That's this one. Okay. Yours is light rum, dark rum, pineapple juice, um, orange juice, lime juice, grenadine, and then you, ah, grenadine. you yeah. can garnish it if you want to. You don't have to. We're not on that level yet. We'll, we'll get there eventually, but that's, that's the drinks. Mm. So that's the drinks we're uh, flavoring today. I guess there'll just be a new segment. <laughs> the drinks of flavoring for this podcast. The drinks of flavoring. The drinks I actually like that name. Drinks of flavoring. The drinks of flavoring. That's that's a uh, drunken ramble if I've ever heard one. So I've been drinking since like five thirty. It's nine oh seven, and you messaged me at like six thirty ish, six twenty ish, something like that. You're like, I'm on my way. And I was like, I already tried the. Pretty much the rum punch. Because, you know, I you got here at 6.30. Oh, then I, yeah. I mean, I finished it by the time you texted me because I had to try both to make sure they were decent enough so I could give my recommendation to you, mm. which I still think the Blue Hawaiian is better than. The Blue Hawaiian is better than the rum punch, but the rum punch is a nice. It'll sneak up on you. Yeah, it's a nice change. So. But. So my favorite. Thing in the world, book talk. Book talk. I was wondering. I was like, I thought you were gonna say Pearl or Cabo. Book- I mean, Pearl is my favorite dog, right? Hands down, one hundred percent. And I'm not like a lot of people. Whenever I have kids, I will have a favorite kid. <laughs> I've told Justice to think, <laughs> I'm gonna have a favorite kid. It's gonna happen. <laughs> like I've joked with my mom. It's like, so I'm your favorite, right? And everybody thinks I'm the favorite because me and my mom talk all the time. And it's like, but who's really the favorite? She's like, why have favorites in different areas? When it comes to Christianity and Bible talk and knowledge and stuff in the real world, I talk to you because you've, you've been around. You understand. Now, if I want to talk to planning, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to your older sister. Yeah. She knows everything about planning. So in the bipartisanship of 
having five kids. I can respect that. Yeah. But then as me, as like, mm, well, I'm still going to have a favorite. <laughs> you, who's the real favorite, do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Like, for me, I know it's not my estranged sister that preys on the government. Mm-hmm. And I use those words very deliberately. Uh, deliberately. Um, I don't know. She spends time with my older sister and my middle and my other two brothers a lot. She only lives with my youngest brother, Ardvark. Yeah. But I don't know. Ardvark talks to me and you more than like personally, job wise, stuff he's Going getting through. into. Like yeah. he's mom, dad, stay back up a little bit. I'm trying to build who I am. And my older sister is living with them, but they just bought or built buying a house now, potentially, which connection with your parents, props. Oh, did they? So the first realtor that came through, they hated. Really? Like, absolutely freaking hated. It was like, oh, well, maybe this can do this, and maybe this can do this. And my sister was like, no, boy, no. no. So whatever other realtor they jumped over to next, your parents hooked them up with through the connection. and Yeah. So they like that one. They like the house they're going for. There's some changes they need to do. But then... The brother under me, because Aardvark's the youngest. My older sister lives with them till they move. I don't know. I think favorite-wise, it'd be a hard toss-up between me and my older sister. Yeah. Because we have our life together. We're not always relying on them. So it's your older sister. We're we're talking on dependence at this point. Yeah. But my older sister's very much like my dad, and my mom and my dad don't always get along. So... (laughs) It's like she's talking to dad while talking to her oldest child. So it's, I could definitely see it be a mix up between my older sister and me. Definitely the older sister. Definitely my older sister. Someone's in denial. Hey, you know what? Same size shoe as me. I bought high heel shoes for her when she was in freaking Alaska because she couldn't get anything shipped there in a reasonable time for the Air Force ball when he was still military. Yeah. I was like, well, we have the same size foot so i went to whatever woman bougie foot store and i was like here you go here's 300 dollars shoes she was like well i wasn't gonna buy those i was like i mean you like them right <laughs> she was like well yeah i was like just pay me what you can so i think she paid me like half or a little bit over half and i was like that's good all right I mean, whatever I, I don't care you at least have shoes faster than so so funny Funny note on that is that my dad is the one who picks out my mom's shoes. Okay. Right. It, which is funny because he he is a very like masculine person, right? I wouldn't exactly I wouldn't label your dad as metro. If he's metro, he's very minimal metro. Like he cares about his appearance. Yeah. But not to the point as like I care what other people think about my appearance. Right. Not I mean, not any more than anyone like you or me care about what other people think of our exact right? I, I would definitely label him masculine minimal metro yeah cuz there's definitely a mix between the two with but, everyone not just him everyone has a masculine metro level well not everyone there are some folks out there who they're so uncomfortable with their masculinity that they can't they can't even consider you're right and then we just have the people that are in denial yeah. Because everyone cares about their appearance somewhere. Yes. But your dad buying your mom's shoes. I mean, it's just a thing, right? Is it just because he cares about the appearance of it? Or is it because... It's because apparently he's really good at picking out shoes. So does he have a better style? Or is it just they are better shoes for her that's more comfortable that she enjoys? Style-wise. Plus, I mean, obviously comfort takes into account, right? Because you're, if you buy a pair of shoes and they're uncomfortable, you're not going to wear them. That's just how that works. I mean, that's... <laughs> that's how that should work. And if you're wearing shoes that are uncomfortable... Get rid of them. Yes. I mean, that's... Or, here's the well, other side of this. Donate. Girls, if you're going out for the night, and you're hitting the town... That's Jess. I'm back. And you're wearing your heels, please, for the love of God, pack some flats Have and your fucking bag. sandals or something. Yes. Yep. Please, because before the end of the night, you will you're end up barefoot change. otherwise. Yep. 
the number of times I've experienced this is exponential. It's crazy because what you just said is happening or has happened in the past couple months with me and Jess. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, I like these shoes. You should get these shoes because this. I like the look of them. They look more comfortable. They look more stylish. Yep. And she's like, eh. And then we went back in another time to buy another set of shoes. Now, no. To date, she has 42 different pairs of shoes. I know because I bought your, I talked to one of the shoe connoisseurs, one of my black friends at work, because they care more about shoes than most white people. Right. Period. And he was like, oh, yeah, here's, here you can buy this. You put them in there. They have a vent hole in the back, vent hole in the front, so they don't stink up wherever. And you place them in this little container. So I went and bought shoes. I bought shoes about two months later. I was like, what about these shoes? She was like, well, you recommended them to me before. I was like, well, you want to try them on? She tried them on, loved them to the point. She loves these shoes. She wears them all the time. And I was like, mm, I would have saved like, I don't know, 40 bucks <laughs> if you would have bought these the first time. Well, I can't judge on like, because I collect shoes. I can't judge now. At the time, I could judge because I just bought two different because we bought the same shoes because yeah. they're a Skechers lookalike. They're being 86, never going to exist again. And I was like, well, cool. So I bought them. I bought them be or they were gifted to me. And I was like, hey, Mike, these shoes are really cool. They're all terrain. They're weather. They're water resistant. Yeah. They're my work boots. Yeah. Work boots. Work Skechers. For, for summer. They're in everywhere. I wore them on the bike. Great. Don't care about them getting dirty. Bought another pair, and they're just still in the box. Like, I care about shoes to the point I bought a pair of Adidas I love. Yeah. But they're my sunny time shoes. If it's raining, not wearing them. Well, I mean, I have... Pearl. I have multiple different pairs of boots. I still have all my combat boots because they were all they were all unserviceable, but they're... But still work? still work i wear them around the yard all the time right i've seen it a couple times you've, you've worn your if you catch on the k&m channel you'll yeah, definitely no, see normally i'm wearing them there because i don't care what happens to them fuck it which definitely a hook we're about to start doing the chicken coop next week i think is next week so this weekend i'm going to be out in the yard i'm going to be cutting down more poles for us to use so I, I got think it. we got four or five maybe so if we can just get the framework for the chicken coop up I know we drew it out. We did. We did. We'll we'll draw it out again. But if we can at least get the framework up, I can yeah. I can do I can do the roof. I could do the wall, yeah. like the, the hardy plank walls and everything. Well, really, all you could do is I mean, for the coop coop, you could do the hardy plank, but the run, you could easily just do chicken wire. Well, and... I'm going to do chicken wire, but that's the thing is I need to get the poles in the ground. Yeah, so you and can... I need to get the framing for all that up. And I could do that by myself. But it's better. If... It's better if I do it with someone. So I just need to cut down some more poles. I need to go pick up some more gravel to stabilize the poles. We could do it on the way to your bees. Let's let's chop down some of those trees. Well, and... I was going to do that this weekend. Oh, I mean, exactly. That's what I'm saying. On the path to your bees. Yeah. Which we'll we'll do a video on your bees soon. Maybe same day. Try to get info on that so we can get more of the decent sized trees for poles. Yeah. Because you don't need four by four, two by four, mm -hmm. six by six, eight by you don't. You can get what's native to you, and it'll work better, and your chickens won't even care. Well, and, and with these cedars, it's like they dry out, and then they just don't go bad. They just exist for they fucking ever. They just exist ever. forever. Um, so I mean, it's the Texas way of handling fencing and everything else, right? Is you just fucking build out cedar stuff. I mean, this was a long tangent off book talk. It was a long but tangent. But I do want to get back talk. to book talk because that that really starts our podcast, puts us in in the motion, in the right headspace. It was it was definitely a good segue. But let's jump over to book talk. What I've what I've read on Mike's book talk, I've continued my devotionals. I'm learning more. So it's um, let me pull it up. It's the Bible chronologically, so you actually understand the order of the Bible, how it starts from Adam and Eve to Revelation. Okay, so... It reads more like a story. chronologically? So... Because is the Bible not chronological? No. no. Okay, so how is the Bible not chronological? So if I read 
from Genesis to Revelations, I'm not reading the Bible in order? Not entirely. So you have, so for example, um, Noah had this timeline, but then you have other people. So Noah's timeline, Noah's the reset. So we have Adam and Eve to Noah. Adam and Eve were created. Then we have Noah, the next reset, essentially, of the earth. You understand that one? Yes. So from there on, now we have all these different timelines in a way that are going on at the same time. This person lived this long. Abraham, for example. Moses lived this long. Job lived this long. So all these people lived in um, the same timeline of someone else that you start understanding and start grasping more in the story-wise. So the book is the one-year chronological Bible. And it's 72 hours. If you read it faster, it's 40 hours, but it's it's pretty good because it gave me more of an understanding. Like during this timeline, because Moses and them were after Joseph and the coat of many colors. Okay. Which to me, I I never even... I didn't know that that was a thing. Because Joseph then brought all his family over to Egypt and... Joseph's in charge of all of Egypt eventually. And then pretty much 80, 90, 100 years later, now his family's in slavery because the Jewish population, the Hebrew population has become so big. Right. So, I mean, this really reads more like a book, a story. It's the same book that we have, the 66 book of the Bible, but it puts it more chronologically that we understand. So we go from Joseph understanding how he was in charge of all of Pharaoh's stuff. Pharaoh was like, everything I give you prospers. Mm -hmm. And this is historical too. It's not just biblical. It's like everything I've given you, you've made better. Yeah. So we go from that to Moses. It was like, okay, well, we just jumped about 150 years from Joseph to Moses. But to me, I was like, I thought Joseph was after Moses because the way the Bible reads. And it's what happens in between. Do we have any details in between? It talks about context and stuff that's stated in there. So, and it's it's all in the Bible. It's just when you read it from Genesis to Revelation, it it doesn't make the same sense to me, at least chronologically. Yeah. Because when I read a when I read a book, I expect A to Z, and that's what I'm expecting. And when you read the Bible. It's time of written is when it starts being put out. Genesis was the first book written. Revelation was the last. So you start going through that. From my understanding, I could be wrong. Someone can comment if I'm wrong. But that's that's where it goes. But we have this understanding now. It's like, ooh, I didn't understand this. I wasn't aware of the chronological order in the same way. Yeah. But that, that's where I'm at. That's pretty fascinating, actually, right? Because I didn't realize that that was not necessarily chronological. Um, I just it kind of accepted that it was. Same. And I never thought about it. Wife started earlier this year with her group, and I was like, okay, you started bringing up some points. That I'm like, I'm not too familiar on the timeline. Familiar. Screw it. You know what? Audiobook, boom, and I'm just pushing through trying to build my own knowledge. But yeah. that's where I'm at book wise. So that is your let's call it self help book, right? It's definitely a self help book. It's what is your plan for your next fiction book? I just got my credit. I think I put the one you talked in the wish list. Since we're on podcast, watch me freaking buy this bad boy. Because I really want you to get that one. All right, so here. here you go. Here's so here's my wish list: Child of the Ghost, He Who Fights with Monsters, Twinborn Chronicles. Um, you didn't do any of those, yeah? So, is it Child of Ghosts? What's the one I texted you, <laughs> bro? We text too much for me to remember <laughs> that. Um, that uh, was a Reddit of, post of Shadow and Sea. Of Shadow and Sea. Because I specifically didn't buy a book when I got it because I was like, I don't think that's the right book that Mike recommended last podcast. Yep, Shadow of Shadow and Sea. By Will Wright? Yeah, I looked at the text. 
um, Shadow of Sea, The Elder Empire. But that's mine. What are, what are you reading right now? So I, I'll give you an option. Do you want to hear about the the book we were talking Screw about? Screw it. Let's touch them all. I, I want to touch them all. Okay. I mean, okay. I mean. Us, Shadow, and Sea, book one, buy for one credit, game. All right. Let's, let's start from the first book you read this week or listen to and we'll we'll go we'll go by the book i got pulled up right now okay let's go um i am reading another another uh sci-fi uh military sci-fi um called the empire's core okay right and so the setup is essentially like this is far future right you know uh earth has gone through you know earth and in, in in the greater uh, like Earth has changed different of humanity, which is spread across the stars, has gone through a couple different, you know. So we've traversed the stars already. Yeah, we're, like we're, we're, we're talking we're, about two thousand years, maybe three thousand years, something like that. Like a thousand years or something okay. like that, right? Um, you know, we've got technology that's more advanced, right? But humanity is still going to humanity, and so we are. We have an empire with an emperor and a senate, and we've spread across the stars. But what we are at is we are very much at the decline of this configuration for humanity. This empire is on the decline, right? We had just had a tyrant emperor that got assassinated. So we had we already had a revolution for this yes. empire. And, and so and then a child the child emperor got put in charge and of course he's just a puppet more or less for the senate and the senate is all like money 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 power 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 and because they're doing this, it's causing everything to slowly fail around them. And we come in here and we start following this captain for a Marine division, right? And these Marines really dig back all the way to their roots, back to United States Marines. Like, they, they acknowledge that, but these are the— So they have the history connection that right. really drives them. Yeah, and but they are the Empire's Marines, and they are not sworn to— they are sworn directly to the emperor, right? So the kid now, right? We're sworn to the kid, and and their their goal is to, you know, they're not controlled by the senate, so obviously the senate doesn't like them and stuff like that. And this captain speaks truth to power, right? He was like, "It is not me and my people who fucked this situation up. It is y'all who fucked us. Y'all being the emperor, or y'all being the the senate, the council." Okay. Um, and so they go, they, they're like calling for his head and the commandant of the Marine Corps calls him up and he goes, so, you know, you fucked up, right? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, well, here's the thing. The empire's about to probably collapse here pretty soon. I need to get you, you out of the, the solar system, out of the soul system. And so I'm going to send you to a friend's world where they need some help. Fucking pull, you know, take your, your company, which is. His detachment of Marines are... About 80 Marines. So, ooh, that's more than a detachment now. Yeah. About 80 Marines. Um, gather all the supplies that you want. Of course, they have auxiliaries who, who are their support yeah. element who used to be Marines and got injured or what, what they're have your, you. They're your extras, your yeah. reserve, your medical, your... Um, and they go off to this world, and this is where we start out with them going to this world and saving this world from falling into... You know, a civil war. Um, Full on chaos. And, and you're really seeing, like, how the Empire is on the decline. And that's the first book. And then there are 22 books out right now. Bro, I just, I just downloaded the next book of Shadow and Sea. And it, you know, obviously it's touching on, like, at some point, I, I think it goes through four books with, this company probably but you're invested some, something and then i think it jumps over to you'll you'll go somewhere else in the empire and start following someone else and still it'll, following it'll, the same i'm sure there'll be some connection yeah, it'll all tie together right but, but you're invested in this book series how many books are you in i the, i had originally read the first four books and then i jumped off to something else and i was like i need to get back to the series and i i had read it years ago and i was like i need to get back to the series and get back to digging into it again so i started again from book 1 okay um uh, and i was like oh man it's just so good you know and 
you can see a lot of parallels between like our nation and, and what's the going impact. on in the like book. one of the things that they say is they're like you know there's a lot of issues when there's a lot of um intelligence agencies being stood up you know it's like uh, uh, uh. oh yeah we've had a couple of those the past couple of years agencies beefed up and so that is the empire's core um by who oh thank you uh <laughs> bring up the book details um by christopher g natel N- 20... Nutal? N- so 22 books the empire's core by christopher g natal Natal, right? Yep. Okay. So, how many books are you into this one? So Current, originally, I know you read four. So I, I'm on the second book right now. Okay. Because you're re recollecting all the information. I started, I think, Wednesday. Okay. And then today I didn't read, obviously, because I was busy. But you know, yesterday I did. Um, and it, and I, yeah, I'm just refreshing myself on the okay. first four books, and then I'm going to continue on. Um. So I did. I did that, and then audio book. Wise, I've listened to seventeen books this week. Only two. <laughs> um, <laughs> audiobook wise, I did listen to a new one. Ooh, non recycle bin. Non recycle bin. Uh, called the Atrocity Engine: Custodians of the Cosmos, Book One, by Tim Wagner. How many books? Only one so far. Oh, wait, but he, he plans on continuing. It looks like he plans on continuing because it's a book one, right? All right, well, let, I'm um, all ears. So this is very, this is, feels very like that Cthulhu mythos, like, okay. you know, things that are so alien and otherworldly that they're hard to imagine um, kind of thing. But you're following an, an agent who's part of this organization and this 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 government organization's job is to fight against entropy or the end of the universe, right? Um, okay, they're doomsday preppers. Well, for, for everyone, not just for themselves. And and you know what happens is that like entropy or corruption gets spread into our world, and their job is to go around and identify the corruption. And, you know, neutralize the corruption, fight against it, keep it from affecting normal people as much as possible. That being said, this is not one for people who are not willing to, like, be able to visualize some, like, fucked up shit. Like, like nothing is off. No one is free. Pregnant women, kids, What everyone. you're describing seriously sounds like the Beekeeper movie with um, uh, the dude that did Crank. Yeah. Um, like hands down, beekeeper movie is like your your detriment to society. Goodbye. Like, yeah, I mean, this is it's very like it's very graphic, and it's very much. I don't like like the main the 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 agents. It's like okay, they they don't have a lot of like a, they don't have any abilities. They don't have any magic or anything like that. It's just like technology. And, you know, intelligence is what's pulling them through. Dirty deeds done dirt cheap. But although they feel like you, you're you like, oh, man, it's all seat of the pants. It's like, yeah, but it doesn't feel like seat of the pants by the same token. Invested. Yeah. Okay. I mean, sounds like a good book series, too. It's 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 very good, especially because I get into the, the like, anything that has that, like, that Cthulhu touch, like, that, that, that HP Lovecraft touch yep. of, like so unimaginable that you describe the horror that someone experiences on viewing it in order to describe the horror. But we're going to intermission and jump back into book talk. And we're back. um, Continuing off that, we have uh, was it something about the trenches or it's a it's a Steam game where essentially it's all Cthulhu oriented. It's a fishing game, and you have to dig from the trenches and go fishing for diff- different fish. And there's a story with it, but it's all connected to Cthulhu. And there's like two different endings with it. Yeah, and it sounds very similar to this Cthulhu type understanding that you're talking about in the book. Um, to, to stop the end of the world, or 
There's another one that reminds me of it. It's, uh, I think it's like Sunless Skies or something like that. And essentially, um, you like there was a there was one game where it was like sunless seas and i think it was followed up by sunless skies and in sunless seas obviously you're on a boat and you're traveling around and you come across like you know things that are just unimaginable and and you know you're fighting against terror and you're trying to do resource management you're trying to complete quest um and sunless skies is essentially the same thing except that you have a train okay that flies through the skies it it's hard to describe it accurately but and what's fascinating about this is it's kind of a roguelite because you know the the concept is is that your your train dies and gets destroyed right and so the next like like they salvage it and the next captain takes over for the 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 ship and then you continue on and sometimes you'll you'll have some of the items that you lost or something like that all the quests get reset I mean, so the game I was talking about was Dredge. Really, yeah. really good game. But there's also a movie that talks about that. In, in a way, pretty much this Earth has frozen over. Earth, Terra, wherever, wherever they live. Whatever planet they're on. But it froze over. And essentially the people in the back, the further back in the train you go, the poorer you are society-wise. And the closer towards the front, the more prestigious you are. Yeah, I, I've, I've seen that. I can't remember the movie name. Yeah, I can't remember the movie name, but I've seen that. That's also the one that my dad likes to quote because he talks about them like feeding them bugs. <sighs> feeding them bugs, putting their arm out the freaking train window, freezing off and eating it. And Ugh. That's not disturbing. But I mean, it sounds very in line with what you're talking about. So that was book two that you read. Sunless Skies. If you like roguelites, I would definitely suggest it. It's a lot of fun. It's one that I cycle back to. Okay. Yeah, text me. I'll definitely probably jump on this game and 100% it. Because I definitely 100% games. Like Vampire Survivor? Like Vampire Survivors. Which which I showed you, and I expected us to be able to play together, and then you're those like... I mean, you also said you were going to talk about it on a podcast. I'm like, oh, we just got this game, and done. But, you know, I also bought other games. You did. I, haven't, I haven't touched the Zelda one that we were playing the other day as much as I've wanted to. Yeah, don't touch it. That's a, that's, that's it a, was like, that's a group game. That's going to be a struggle city for me, not touching the that's game. That's a group game. But we're playing Grounded right now. Yeah, we're playing Grounded. So Because Grounded did a release. Grounded the 1. did 1.4 release. release. We, can't, we can't fully touch. We're touching on some of the stuff, but we can't fully touch on NG+. Plus, mm -hmm. And it goes up to 9. But four is the most released where they have stuff. Four is infused, and then three to one they release new weapons and stuff. But your four, game, new game plus up to new game plus four. Yeah, new game plus four is where they have new stuff actually introduced in the game. From what I've researched, up to new game nine is the highest you can go right now, and it just anywhere from five or four is the last introduction of stuff. Introduction. Hold on, I gotta take a big gulp. And from five to nine, it just gets harder and harder. But the fact they have pretty much nine prestiges of this game, because yeah. every time you redo it, it resets the store, and you gotta re-push it, and you gotta fight. Cabo, stop your licking. You gotta refight the hedge brood mother, the mantis, and the wasp. Back him. <laughs> stop your licking stop it stop it so I mean you still have to beat like the extra DLC type characters go ahead Toby come up just lay on him he's he's used to yeah, Pearl just he's laying on top Pearl. of him yeah so yeah I mean oh man I'm super stoked to get to new game plus and get to the infusions and all so we're literally just like gunning right now it's like Get this the game, armor, get... I wouldn't be surprised if I just push through the rest of the story and you just hop on and we're on New Game Plus. Like, I'm seriously going to push Javamatic, which is the quote-unquote end game. I can definitely single-handedly do the Broodmother 
in the hedge because that was the first spider we ever fought. Yeah. Man, that first time. The first time was we, a nightmare. We, we were, yeah, man. We, we, we were going in. You're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't know about this, bro. <laughs> yeah, because there's webs. You're going through literally a cocoon of spider web. Oh, yeah, it's terrifying. It, it, and it's a know, banana spider. By the That's... way, I will. I don't know if we've talked about Grounded before on this. I don't think we have. But I will give them props because I think they might have been the first game that did the arachnophobia setting. I think I would agree on that. And, and other games have done it since. They've started doing it because a lot of people, same way Hell Divers recently, which I want to touch on, um, they touched on the people that want to play the game are afraid of spiders because they love the whole honey, I shrunk the kids or honey, we shrunk ourselves. Mm -hmm. Little people in a big world. Honey, I shrunk the kids was so good. And that's essentially what the game is referred to a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it's the game where someone shrunk all the kids. It's like, are you talking about the movie or, I mean, the game, the game, like it's called grounded, but no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And other games have come out with, oh, you're a tiny person in a normal world. And, and, it, it, and they do it pretty well. We got another one that we want to follow Small up. world. Small land. Small, small land. We always get that one mixed up. We do. Not a care in the world. Man, no bow. All Toby. All Toby. Hey, Pearl. But yeah, it's it's very interesting the way games have definitely done that. Oh, we, never... we never redid the thing. Yeah. Uh, what are we at time wise? We're we're special kind of special. Oh, seven thirty making math. Twenty two. You're the one who's like, I could be completely asleep and do I calculus. can, and that's the worst part. Okay, so so we're gonna segue this into we have an app. We we have an app, so we struggle getting up in the morning. That's a, saying a it very do. nicely. Yeah, and and I had told him about this app I had that had all the various challenges that you're required to do in order to wake up before it turned off the alarm. Um, QR code useless. Light sensitivity useless. Like, QR code useless? Yeah. I thought QR code had you going. Yeah, for like four days. And then I would walk out to my fridge, scan it, and then walk back to my room and fall asleep. Like. Dude, that's a you problem. That is a me problem. Struggle City. Wait, for real. could you say it to do like multiple? Yes. I have three different things I got to solve every morning. So, QR code. I did QR. Light sensitivity. I've and... done QR Wi Fi because it makes me walk all the way to the front door for that exact range. And I actually got to pace around a little bit because the Wi Fi changes slightly. So, I got to wait till I get that exact Wi Fi bandwidth there. So it does QR code, it does light sensitivity, which light sensitivity was useless to me too because I just slapped it against my lamp and then I went back to sleep. Um, it does Wi-Fi. Wi it, it does, does math, math all the way up to calculus. Which I I cranked it up to doing multiplication the other day and I told him about it, but I, I'm sitting there and I couldn't figure out what three times three was. Like first thing in the morning, waking up trying to do math, I was like, "What's the what's the three times three? It could have probably been two times two, and I wouldn't have been able to figure it out." It also has a captcha. It does have captcha. Um, so let me pull up the app. So the app is called Amdroid. Am A M Droid. A M Droid. And let me turn off Saturday. I don't know why Saturday's on. Screw that. Um. But essentially, it has many different puzzles you can go through that are meant to push your cognitive ability to force you awake. Yep. Math is definitely not one of mine. Math is torture for me because... I know it was so bad because it was still plugged in. And I was like, oh, it's math. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Done. And Jess hits me on my right shoulder and is like, are you seriously going back to sleep? Did it you, was ringing for three minutes. Did you set it to five math problems? Calculus was the last one. No, did you set it to do multiple math problems? No. See, that's, that's probably what I should fucked do. Up. You need to be setting it to do multiple. Then I'm really going to hate myself. Yes. 
Yes, you but will. But it'll force me awake. It will force you to reconsider staying up so late. No, that's not going to change. Well, I'll just get less sleep. It forces me to reconsider staying up so late. That's for sure. Because we were playing the game, and I was like, uh, I gotta go to Bro, bed. Bro, I stayed up to like 4 o'clock, woke up at 7 the next day. I was bright-eyed and fucking bushy-tailed. Pour myself some espresso. Game time, baby. You're not 30 yet. I'm 30. Are you? No. Nope. When did you turn 30? This year. Last year. 93. I thought you were 29 still. Nope. Huh. I'm still the youngest person in our friend group, though. Well, yeah, no, you are. Absolutely. I mean, everyone I hang out with is either... I think the minimum is four plus years old. It trips my parents out when I talk about my buddy Dudding and he's in his forties. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I can't like, they have a hard time conceiving of the fact that I have a friend, a, a good friend of mine who's in his forties. And it's like, I mean, yes, I get where you're coming from. But however, also where I work, also the people yeah. I'm around, like I have, I have buddies I talk to. Um, so this one of the people, part of the, rainbow community um he just got a motorcycle really cool guy he's been he's been there for ever he's the historian for the building and where we work and military history but he got a motorcycle he was like oh i want to install a sissy bar he was like okay we can install a sissy bar here you go we traded numbers he's like 52 53 yeah and i told my mom about this and she was like he's kind of old i was like Everyone I hang out with is older than me. That That's not saying much. Right. Like, you got to understand where we work and we're IT. So there's a lot of people that have tenure in this environment. Right. Like, it's not just, oh, well, yeah, cool. He's a historian, but he's a historian for everything IT yeah. that we've been doing for 40 plus years. And it's been passed down forever. And that's just where it goes. I mean, one of my coworkers legit worked on punch card mainframes back in the day. And he's like, I worked on punch cards. I worked on reel to reel. I, and he's like, I worked on fucking laser disc platters yep. that were this big around. And I'm like, that's the admin we hired for my job. That's, that's fucking history, bro. Like, that's a lot. He was like, I remember we still had to do punch cards for the military. It realistically, we've gone from, Mainframe centralized location, everything connects to the to to spread out yeah. to back to the everything's in a centralized location cloud environment. Which segues it, into something else I want to talk about. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm all ears. I was waiting for it. <laughs> am I am I leading this podcast? <laughs> I mean, let's go. That's fine. Um I think that we are seeing a change in the push for cloud because okay. people are starting to realize how expensive cloud environments are and maintaining, yeah. you know, maintaining um, the cloud space, the storage. Yeah, the, the, the storage and everything, maintaining these giant fucking buildings full of fucking server racks, I which mean, they're so big that they don't even like do like hard drive or server repairs in these racks. They replace entire racks. Yep. Entire fucking rack. They go the whole rack's down because this one thing is broken. And it's like with the minimal amount of people actually working in the building. Yes. And so all these folks have moved to cloud and cloud has become so exorbitantly expensive now that they've realized that well, this happens. This is capitalism. Hands down. If we know more people yeah. want it, let's upcharge it. Like, that's seriously what's happening. You good? Ugh. Yeah, just got a lot of gas. Struggle city. Mouth gas. Ugh. It's all them seltzers. All them seltzers. You've had what? Two? Two. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's... So they've realized how expensive it is to do cloud, and people are doing trying to go back to like hybrid environments and stuff like so what they were saying originally is like ah well we're not going to need admins anymore soon right we're not going to need engineer like everyone's just going to be that's, in the cloud i mean that's not like, true they're still not, gonna need admins that's not how this works at all we still need someone 
even if he's an expert, a jack of all trades, we still need someone to administer all these different things. Like you can't, it's it's not going to happen. Two things will always be needed: medical and IT. And it, it's just too fucking expensive to try and move your entire, especially when we're talking to small to medium businesses. It's too expensive to try and move everything to the cloud. Oh, hands you down. end up fucking yourself. Like it, it's not going to change. It really won't. It's it's wild. We look at we're in a world where people want to move to an instant gratification nation. Everybody wants it now. Everybody wants it readily available. Well, even if it's cloud, it still has to show up and live somewhere. Like it, it does. It's going to live in a hard drive, solid state drive. Yeah, somewhere. All the cloud is is your shit stored on someone else's shit somewhere. It's it's interesting. Nothing? I mean, cloud has its place. And it has value, but adding more cost to cloud doesn't really help them. It's no different than when Unreal Engine decided to upcharge everyone. It was like, oh, we're just increasing the cost. And everybody's like, then we're not using you. Then we're you. not going to use you. So, I mean, we went from Unreal Engine being affordable, yeah. cloud being affordable, like, Everything was affordable at a point to the point that now we're hitting the capitalism bad points. Which happens. And this is how the market, when the market is allowed to do its job and it's not interfered with by the government, the market has these ups and downs and these swings and, and companies come and they go. I mean, a perfect example is Sears. Sears, when my dad was a when kid, When Sears was, was Sears Roebuck? Huge. Sears was huge back then. Well, it was Sears Roebuck. Yeah. Up until, I think, 70s, 80s. But now Sears is nothing. That Like, if you ask a kid nowadays what Sears was, and they're like, Sears is the thing that my parents talk about. That's where I have to go to buy clothes. Right. No one no one cares about Sears. Like, it's, it's one of those, ugh. But, so, one thing I wanted to talk about. Your small penis? Uh, uh, is she going to come out? <laughs> nope. It's micro. I'm like a gerbil. <laughs> Hung like a bull is like I, I like to say. Your your testicles hang very low, but the PP is just so small. Millimeter Peter over here. Mm-hmm. I got to get the calipers out to see how big that son of a bitch is. Damn. <laughs> no joke. One of those micro measures. Millimeter measuring. Um, so what were you going to bring up? I want to talk about the protests, but not like all the protests at the college. Pearl, stop. But I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to focus on the college protests. I yeah. wanted to focus on an aspect of it where cops in general are showing up to what is a private property. Like just because you go to college somewhere, I want to talk about the private property and the college that's going on. I'd love to have Eddie here. It'd be freaking awesome. I wish we had Eddie here. I mean, I called him. He's busy, apparently. But showing I up... I hate you, Eddie. Yep, Eddie. Just for you, bro. But what is what is your take? What is your understanding? Like, I understand people are protesting Hamas, Israel, and they're protesting at colleges that so, they attend, but... There are students there. They're paying to go to the college. So, I mean, listen, I was in the military. Yeah. And I think most prior, most military members or veterans will say, hey, I fought for the country so that you can say whatever dumb shit you want to say. No, agreed. I don't have to agree with you. That means not, not talking about the protest side, talking about the cop side. What, where, what about the cops? So I didn't, the, I didn't, I'm not understanding the question. So the cops are having to show up and detain these individuals because they're so the way you should, so they're doing illegal protests. They're illegal what, protesting. They're not actually pushing through a protest. A proper protest should be pushed through your local government and, because the local government's not going to. Den they can't 
denied the protest. Correct. So they're illegally protesting is the issue. So cops are showing up. And and the reason That's is where the the reason is is because I I think this is a lack lack of education. I would agree on that. Right, because we're like, oh man, it's America. You you can protest, you protest wherever, protest wherever yeah. you want. But this is where it comes into is it's like that was a pearl fart. Sorry. Oh yeah, no, she got she's got some good ones. You're probably gonna smell that in a second. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that wasn't second. That was faster. <laughs> Ooh, the moment you said it, I inhaled, and it was toxic. You you those combo left. <laughs> Look, my humor's dark like a kid with cancer. Never grows old. Like holy cow. That was a bad part though. Uh, no, my my I want to understand how so, you feel about the cops having to I, I know it's their job. But they're illegally the thing is it's a legal broadcast illegal protest. Protest on a college campus, which is private property. Okay. So they're doing this, and there's been videos all over of the cops going in, and of cops going. But my ham. favorite one is still the guy who is who went into limp fish mode and thought that that would stop the cop, and he just like I didn't see that one. Picked him up by like his arm and his leg and hold him off. Mad props. I haven't seen that. Just one. like, just like nothing. Like, like you could tell that this guy was like, oh yeah, I lift. The <laughs> only one I've seen where someone just goes limp fish is he's running, and then he realizes the cops getting closer. So he just limps and just face plants into the dirt. And the cop just grabs his foot and pulls him to his patrol car. It's like, you got to think, they're, they're just doing the job. Yeah. They're doing what they're called for. It's an illegal protest. It's, it's what's going on. Which, I mean, that's the thing is, like, I get the struggle with the very statement of an illegal protest frustrates me. But I understand why it's a thing. Because, you know, I it, it, the it should, security piece of it. Well, no, because there safe? should there should be no ability for anyone to deny me my ability to protest. Oh, agree. And but that happened. It that has happened in the past, it especially has during the um eighties and nineties. It happened. Yeah, during sixties and seventies, it happened. Yeah, it's it's happened pretty much since protesting in America was a thing, right? The, through through. Throughout the entire 20th century, we can go it happened. 19, 1920s election where women were able to start voting. Yeah. And that was the first protest. But again, it was still, they still did it a proper way, which th I think the point of where I'm I going think, with this. I think this, a proper protest is something that does not interfere with your other man, because this is my libertarian roots coming in. And yes. It's like, I want you to be able to do whatever you want to do. As long as what you're doing doesn't fuck with everyone else's world. And I think that's more or less where I'm going. I would, I would want it more broadcasted in a way where you can search protest and how to sign up for a protest on yes. Google or Bing. Because yeah. Well, it, it realistically, I, have, I, I agree with serious, you. I have no problem with you wanting to protest. I don't. I fought for that right. You fought for that right. So, so what we're saying here is that this is some. This is another aspect that needs to be introduced to our education system, right? Oh, like, hands down. Hey, by the way, if you want to protest something, this here's the, the way, way to go, go about, about it. it. Yep. So that it, and by the way, it needs to be reinforced that the government, as long as where where you're, because you can't protest in the middle of the highway. As long right? as you're not violent, they have no legal obligation to not allow you. Right, as long as you're not like protesting in the middle of a roadway. Yep. You don't impair or impede the right. populace. Right. Because in in my in my opinion, if you're if you're protesting in the middle of a highway, if you're impeding and you get run over, it's your fault. It's your fault. Yep. Because it's, me oh, oh, bro. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Dude. The, I can't tell you the number of times that me and my dad watched videos this, of people protesting in this the highway. Video, and we're like, man, it's just weird because. So I apologize now, but dude, bro, Mike, holy shit, dude, I don't even know what they're protesting, but dude with a modified 2002 BMW M3 pulls up. He's honking. Dude's not moving out of the way. He's like, oh, this is what we're doing. Like they're blocking the whole road. Nobody's going. Either way, like, 
my car's loud. Like, my car's obnoxiously loud. Yeah. And it was like, well, my bike's obnoxiously loud. I get it. But no. What does he do? He backs up, turns around, puts the bite pipes like this close to this dude and just neutral bombs this car. Ooh. And all you hear is, blah, 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 blah. To the point that fire comes out at one of them that you see it and it's still popping multiple times. You're like, hmm. He felt your frustration of, fuck you, bro. I need to get where I'm going. Like, you're killing my gas mileage. To the point, dude got off. He continued on. Four or five cars came. The funniest part is a Tesla pulls up, and dude sits in front of the Tesla. He's like, what are you going to do? Play your music loud? Like, yeah. Like, y- you got nothing on you me. You got shit, bro. That's where I think education could help in. A proper protest. Don't block Dude, roadways. Don't. I, I want you to be able to get your view out there. I hands want down. you to be. Able, I want you to be able to fucking yell obscenities yep. at people. Fuck it. I don't care. I don't have to agree with you, and I might counter protest. But again, I've submitted whatever paperwork that again <sighs> the city council can't deny because I've submitted it the was, paperwork. It was it, no different when San Antonio had whatever. What was it gay pride or some showing or. Like, if that's what you want to do, I don't care. I don't know exactly what it is, so I'm totally non-kosher on this. But they went down and had drag shows. Yeah. Message came through on one of the feeds I was on. It was like, everybody's over here protesting it, and they're threatening violence. So me and, like, at the time, 40-something other veterans went down there with our firearms. It's like... Mm -hmm. We fought for this shit. We don't agree with don't this or this. I agree. But we fought for them to have this right. So hands down, screw you, no. And we're there. I'm wearing my body armor. I rode my bike down. <laughs> I think I parked on the front of the church at the time. And we're there, and we're all just, we're posted up. And it was only 40 people that I knew got the message, 40 plus, something like yeah. that. But there was other people that got the memo. Everyone. That agreed or disagreed, the agreement or disagreement was irrelevant. It Doesn't came down to, to this was a right we agree and fought for. Yes. Like, this is what we support our veterans for. This is what, and there was some dude never served. He went to jail like four times and was still out there. All dude had was a knife and body armor. And he had first aid kit on his back. He was like, they're doing this because it's their right. Yeah, They have the same right you do to protest. And the protest was legal. Yep, It just, it came down to, it got to a point where it was violent that the cops in Fort SWAT and everybody came down in riot gear and they pushed us back. They're like, put your guns on safety and back up. And it was like, cool, I'll put it on safety. I still got one in the chamber, but let, yeah, bro, let's, let's, go, let's go. Because at that point, which is another topic I want to touch on, but we'll touch on that once we jump back in. Yeah, intermission. Intermission. But continuing, I, I do want to talk about how pedestrians are helping cops now. Okay. Because um, over the past so many years, eight years, I'd say, we're dealing with this cop hate. Everybody's so against cops. But on the same point, all this is going on. and. So there was a pregnant female cop. I watched a video earlier this week and she's being, in a way, she's trying to detain this person she's arresting for drunk driving. Yeah. She has him outside the car. Dude's wearing work gloves, like yellow work gloves. They're noticeable, even in the video. And they're having this discussion, this interaction. And she's being overcome in a way the point people in this red red dodge ram pull over i say pull over park to the point they i don't know if they did scratch the car or hit the car but they're so close it looks like they did that the point the passenger because there was three or four guys in this truck i don't know who they are don't yeah they they pull up in front that nobody exited out of the right side so were they they in the way of the traffic a little bit, yeah. 
um, but traffic was still flowing. It was going around them. Like, people are still passing by this pregnant lady wrestling with, actually wrestling on the video with this gentleman that's intoxicated. Wait, so who was the cop? The cop was a pregnant female. Why? Okay, I, whatever. I don't, yep. I'm not getting into that one. She was a pregnant female. She's still in the force, still doing beat stuff. And the gentleman was an older gentleman. He that had, she was wrestling with? He was gray-haired, gray-haired gentleman. So she was wrestling with the gray hair. She was wrestling with, with the a gray big old hair bump. with yellow gloves. She's pregnant, and she's losing. You can, in her shop cam, where you can see everything going on yeah. from the dash cam footage, she is losing. Like, she is not winning this battle. And the point that a red, red Dodge Ram 1500, visibly see it on her shop cam, pulls out. Pulls so close to the suspect car that nobody leaves out of the passenger side. So they park in front of it, angled. So it's like, skirt. And everybody gets out and they help this female cop. How'd they help her? They wrestled the guy back. She detained him then, put him in the back of the car. They repeatedly punched him in the face? No, they, they actually detained him. They physically detained him. Actual verbiage not cop verbiage and so you're bringing this up because you've seen more than just this instance of it i've seen multiple instances why have we had so much cop hate over the past couple of years but all these videos are coming out of oh we're helping cops to the point that that was a acceptable issue to the point that other people have had shootouts with cops that civilians have killed individuals or the, the suspect or dropped the suspect and all this. And the cops are like, I appreciate the help. It was like, one, are our cops not properly equipped? First off. And why are we only, why are we, this goes back to the pregnant issue. Why are we sending I, females out that are pregnant and not on desk jockey duty? I think, I think that what we're getting into here is something that we've touched on before is that cops should never go out alone alone they should always go out in teams i realize I that you know you're running into coverage issues and all this stuff eddie talked about this you're yeah, right yeah. yeah but the problem being is that when you send a cop out alone they're alone they're alone they're they got if they get shot if they get stabbed there was they got 15 no one. minutes because it it sped up to the time lapse of their video so you saw the whole video is just two or four times speed, the next time their supervisor, someone showed up for this pregnant female specifically, because today I watched a bunch of different videos because it showed up on my feed. I watched it. But it's consistent. Like, the video I watched was a month ago, which tells me this collection of data has been a month ago to six months ago. The, the other side of it, I think, is... I say we go back to the 1990s rules of how cops are allowed to handle things, right? All right, explain because where 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 so when you watch cops from the 1990s, are we talking about the show cops? Yes. Okay. They'd come in on a suspect and they'd be beating this motherfucker down. They'd have a nightstick and they'd just be like, bam, 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 fucking their world up, right? And I think that that's the way that that needs to be handled. Agree and I disagree on the same point. Only on this standpoint. We had more racist cops in the 90s. A lot more racist cops than right. today. Yeah. Cops is a perfect way to show it. It really was. Um, uncle on my wife's side was on Cops in Albuquerque. Well, he was on a couple different episodes and... The biggest issue was people are bipartisan on certain aspects. So if it's this type of crime, we're immediately violent. There's no buildup. There's no law of any. No, we are immediately violent, which to a point has value. But to cut out everything in between, do they have a weapon first off? A visible weapon. If they have a weapon, hands down, pull, let's go. If they hurt someone, cool, let's pull. If there's no violence to an individual, if it's just drug use, why are we pulling? Are they violent to other individuals? 
If yes, okay, we're pulling. Like, well, well, but what do you mean when you say pulling? Pulling your gun, like pulling well, their sidearm. Well, but that's the thing, because people will get into less trouble for shooting a motherfucker than they will for pulling a nightstick and beating a motherfucker. Correct. And cops has had a perfectly good way of showing. It. I'm glad they revamped it. We see what's going on now. Yeah. And it's one of those. It's a hit or miss. Um, we're we're. I definitely we're we will table this for now because we can continue this with Eddie. Um, we'll definitely talk about cops with Eddie. We'll we'll dive will into we that. Will we though? Yes, we will. Will we, Eddie? Hey. Will we actually get to talk about this? Hey, Eddie. I Let love us you. know in the comments. I love you, Eddie. Um, he'll flick me back. I'll specifically send him this video at this segment. But we will continue this. We'll table this for now because. I feel like he has more value as a cop in the force now. But I know Mike has been itching at a topic. I've got so many fucking topics that I've been itching at. That, that we're going like, oh, well, we're going to talk about this. Well, fuck you. No one cares about what you're talking about, okay? Let's go. <laughs> I'm all ears. I'm done my segments. Let's talk about DEI. Okay. Explain to me like I'm five. What is DEI? Is this this wasn't a link you sent me? It was. Which one? It was the Wikipedia link. Which Wikipedia link? The one that I sent you that was labeled DEI. You, which no. if you had lab read it, you'd know exactly what I was talking about. And so we wouldn't be having this conversation. I mean I'm looking. DEI. I sent it to you. Wednesday okay, at no, 2110. Hold on. We'll, we'll go back to your most recent one, Reddit. Pull up. I said, that was definitely one of the ones that my response is, wow, <laughs> too much in the first few comments. <laughs> I was on the toilet reading this. I was like, nah, fuck this one. Like, I read maybe two comments. And I was like, mm. they showed some furry with feet. And I was like, mm, nope. Do you I'm know done. what it was? Did I, you read? Did you I read what it was about after two comments? So apparently, it was it was a um it was a screen capture from one of those like video game ads that we get all the time. Okay, on on, yes. on the the app. So this was a screen capture from one of those video game ads. But then what someone on Reddit pointed out is they're like, "There's vaginas on the feet of this furry." That's where I stopped. <laughs> I was like, and to go back to your DEI comment, diversity, equality, and inclusion. Yeah, I did read through that. I didn't ever see just DEI. Yeah, it, it it's it's literally D. It, it, I mean, I know I, I I've got it. It's, I see it. I have it pulled up right now on Wikipedia. It says it right there. DEI. Look right. I was right in the there. Air Force. It's in the first I sentence. Skip, I fuck you. It's in the first. I, Fuck you. I skipped through acronyms <laughs> so fast. It was like, oh, whatever. It's weird because Continue. you're saying this because I was also in the army and arguably we have more acronyms. Oh, agreed. Hands down. <laughs> without a doubt. I worked for army for like eight months. I was like, what is this? Oh, that's this. Oh, well, Air Force, we call it this. Oh, well, it's this. And we have two extra letters on it. So we're better. It was like. Well, my favorite is the dagger. Which I forget what all of the dagger stands for, but it's the military version of a like a land nav GPS, like yes. of like a Gerber. It's, yeah. But the thing is, is that somewhere in that acronym is also GPS, which is an acronym. Another acronym within in. inside an acronym. Thank you, Army. Never change. So I read through DEI. So the reason I brought up DEI is because I've I've seen a, a couple of other like articles and posts in. I've had my dad talk about it and I've had, you know, I've seen podcasters talk about it, but Ash daddy or living daddy. Well, I'm not talking to Ash daddy. And well, now am I? I didn't know if Ash daddy talked about this. Well, I mean, has he ever talked about this? No, he okay. doesn't give a shit about this. He's dead. It happened in shows. He's dead, bro. Cause you brought this up and I was like, Oh, this is happening in this show. I watch or it's this show. I watch all over the place. Yep. And the thing so, is, is DEI. That is diversity, equality, and inclusion. Right. So the thing is, is that, and where I really want to touch on is when it comes to video games and TV and movies, right? I have the TV um, show and movie. Right. So, well, I mean, we saw DEI and the results of DEI. Um, you look at 
you look at um you look at the last of us 2 oh no you're right that is a perfect example of dei i played through that one yeah you're right yeah um which it, which is disappointing because i'd say that the gameplay for last of us 2 was phenomenal i will it, still say it's phenomenal and the, the story, story is, is great garbage I like the story. The story is fucking garbage for Last of Us 2. Last of Us 1 was fucking primo. Last if of Us you 2 go through was absolute it, garbage. Hold on. I'm listening. Let me, let me watch it. Let me. Oh, it's all about a woman who is fucking shaped like a band because apparently she's fucking lifting weights. And, and oh, let me kill off. On that standpoint, yes. Let me kill off one of the main characters that you loved from the first game in one of the worst ways that you possibly because can. Because of inclusion. Let me take one of the characters that you loved from the first game and ruin her. Ruin this character and On make that her unlikable. I can agree because Life is Strange and then Life is Strange 2, another story type game, yes. is very similar. Now there's two aspects. If I'm playing only for the story and what's happening, it's good. But if I'm including... What did he do to himself? He got his tooth caught in the... Is he still stuck? I don't know. His not-mother-mother mother came over. Hobie came over. Well, Any Pearl time... came over. Cabo came over. Everyone came Any over. Any time he whines, Toby immediately runs over. Even if she hurts him, to like not intentionally, but they'll be playing and she's a little bit too rough, she will run over and is like, are what you happened? good? What happened? So the fact that the other dogs is like, oh, a puppy is crying. It's like, that's awesome. That tells me we're in a good social environment Pearl. for the dogs. Population is good. Pearl, come on. Toby's going to run up there. Pearl, oh, come on. Hurry I'll up, Pearl. With you. What is he doing? Is he trapped? He's chewing a rock. Chewing a rock, and this is what got him freaking stuck. Close enough that his collar... <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Got in between the slats. And he was stuck. So he was whining because he was stuck there. Pearl, come on. Pearl, come on. Pearl, 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 Pearl. Come on. Hurry up. So that's where the fuzzy potato is. Um, I, I agree to a point. Listen, if you're only going to the game, I'm like going to Life the game. is Strange 2 yep. and Last of Us 2, only for the game and only for that, it's good if you take out everything society-wise. If you take out that. But people can't do that. It's, it's metagaming across the board. So yes, the game sucks in the point attaching... Stop, he's fine. He didn't do anything to him. So I can agree on that point. But the inclusion I'm, thing... I'm sorry that your opinions are wrong. That's it. Now, this is where I agree with you. <laughs> Because I was getting to that point. <laughs> so Survivor. Something I've watched since Survivor 1. Yeah. They've broadcasted this to the point that Jeff Probst is pushing out, I don't know, pretty much every time they have a challenge, every time they have immunity, every time they have, anytime they have a giant gathering of all of them. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, we're doing this. And articles came out as like, well, they're doing this inclusion process. Black indigenous or asian if you're one of these three you're getting on our show it's like okay well this brings value in a way but how does it bring value oh it brings drama and we look past and they stated they've been doing this for the past 12 years if you look at the past 12 years of shows most were predominantly indigenous black or asian and they bring drama which, in a TV show, it brings value, it brings ratings, it brings... It's like, I can understand this as a business aspect. But I don't agree with this well, in the but, point of... But they're pushing DEI to the point to where it's negatively impacting. Like, it is. It, we saw it happen with Marvel. Well, I mean, we I... We saw it happen with the Marvel entire u Oh, yeah, universe. hands down. Like, I applied to Survivor, and I was declined on season 36. And I've applied every year because it's always something I wanted to do. It was like, no, here you go. And I do the video. I do a new video every year. 
it, I would love to be on Survivor for 30 days. Sure, let's go. Because it's, why not? It it seems cool. It looks like something I want to do, but. I I thought you would go for a loan. A loan? Like just another money loan? No. Have you seen the Have you seen the Survivor show alone? Oh, like alone in the dark? Or... No, just alone. Oh no, we've talked about it. Yeah, we yes. talked. We've talked about. It. So the premise being is that they they take these individuals, yeah. and they drop them in the middle of the wilderness, nowhere by themselves. Just, just here you go. You're dropped in the middle of the wilderness, and then they tell them. Survive as long as you can, and I'll, I'll give them. I props applied to naked and alone, but I have too many tattoos. They um, they 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 come out like weekly to check on the status of their health, and if like when I say status of their health, they're not just pulling them for no reason. It's like no, if we don't pull you now, your organs are going to yeah. shut down. Like they this only is no pull shit. them for actual medical reasons. Um, but in, in like these people are like. They teach them the basics of like filming themselves. And well, yeah, stuff they like go that. through about a week or two. Same with uh, Naked and Afraid, because I applied to that one. Mm -hmm. um, thing is, you have to take photos of yourself in a mirror of all your tattoos. Um, the tattoos I have are not allowed on public television <laughs> because they the have organizations is... that I was a part of, and they're not allowed to broadcast them. Because they don't have the copyright. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? I appreciate you guys doing this. That is a very good reason. Because you don't want me to have a coat of wrapping on my back. For what you guys are trying to shoot. Well, plus, I mean, it'd be real awkward when you're fucking the chick on there. You know? Yeah. You've got a wife. I mean, yeah. The season got pretty wild. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm married, but... I'm sleeping with this girl to stay warm. Well, and, and the thing about naked and afraid is that, but we're separated. They're net. They're not actually alone out there. Yep. They've got an entire filming crew out there with them, and it's like, okay, well, that's not. They're not really by themselves. The thing with the loan is, they drop them out there by themselves. Yep. And then they come out and check on them once a week, and it's be like, yeah, you're dying, or I mean, they they have an emergency beacon, yeah. but like one guy. It was the middle of the night, and he had like a bear, like actively around yeah, his I remember that shelter, one. and he did the call in. And in the middle of the night, this crew had to hike in, in the because they could. It was too dark they for them to take yeah. a ship in, so they had to hike in in the dark to come get him. And he was like, "Thank God y'all got here because this bear wouldn't leave me alone." Yeah, no, I mean, there's, there's those. It it definitely only thing, flashes me back to seer training. Well, the only thing is, is that I wouldn't want you to go on that because every military member who's gone on the show has fucking tanked, like hard, like in days. Yeah. No, I I could see that because they're always like, oh man, I had all this military training and I'm so hard, and it's like, yeah, but the problem with military training is that you're trained with a relatively short logistical short change. Leash. Yeah. You know, whereas like. All the survivalists and everyone else who goes out there Nothing. and actually succeeds, they, they like properly know their shit. See, I mean, I would love to do one of those, not for like TV show, whatever, just for myself. Well, I mean, we could do it, dude. Uh, yeah, we can just go on your back 40 and do it. No, I mean, we could like properly do it. We could. We I could mean, go out and do Alaska. I still keep pushing freaking. Survivor every year, because I would love to be on it. Not even for the TV show, just because I would love to do challenges. I would let because every camp I've ever been a part of as a teen, as a as a youth, I loved it. I love doing challenges. I love doing this, 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 and I loved. Yeah, but you're so broken now. I know that's why I love to do it. I want to see how much I can succeed. Oh, Zoomies, he's playing with Cabo. Cabo's, Cabo's itching himself. <laughs> yeah, he's just munching on himself. Oh, oh we lost a camera. We lost a camera. <laughs> Can you see me? Oh, Pearl. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, you say this is going to be the thumbnail every time, and it's never the thumbnail. Like, we'll have perfect images of, like, all the dogs. You're like, this has to be the thumbnail. It's not the thumbnail. Well, the issue is I get to that point, and they're not clear enough footage for me I'm to I'm hearing do a lot of excuses. Damn straight. I heard you had another topic, though. Wait, which... We it, touched well, on DEI. We, we barely touched on DEI. No, DEI, I do think, is ruining everything Like, TV shows, board. like, like... Well, well, shoot, I, I think, I think I'm watching just fantasy, just fantasy type TV shows. And like, we're going to add this, for example, LGBT or this black individual or this well, Asian individual. Well, to yeah, have... we, we talked about it. How many podcasts ago? It was um, uh, the Wheel of Time series. Yep. That got ruined by I DEI. Stopped. I stopped watching it. I had no interest in it. Zoomies. The pearls, the pearls, all excited. Bo and freaking Cabo. They nope, are a duo. Just Cabo. Just Cabo right now. Zoomies. Catch me. Bo's like, I, Bo ran around the yard once. I was like, oh, I'm done. Cabo's just zooming in. <laughs> all right. All the cameras are good. Dogs haven't knocked it over. I'm surprised his potato ass even moved the camera. Dude, he fucking rocked it turned it <laughs> like holy cow but yeah no i mean multiple instances in video games where they're taking you know it's like oh well we need a strong female protagonist and it's like if you need a strong female protagonist then make an original show or something because there's original shows out there or yeah. original content out there with strong female protagonists, you don't need to yeah, invent it. Even, you don't need to inject it. You don't need to drive it. So the rookie, rookie's a cop show. I'm on Zoomies. Um, but the rookie's a show I'm watching. It's about a 40 year old cop, 40 plus year old. He changes all his occupations, jumps over to this. He jumps over to being a cop. He stops a bank robbery with the help of cops. He's like, oh, I want to be a cop. I've been a real estate dude, or I've been a mogul of building for so long so he jumps over to this and two or three seasons in we get this this black individual which actually a really good character the way they did him is very well but he was so popular he has this societal his family has all this money like dude's a rookie cop and he's showing up in a bmw okay it was like Okay, we get it. You come from money. You have this value on TikTok or Instagram, or you are a social star. Oh, damn it. That was your potato again. Struggle City on this camera. <laughs> Pearls is walking around with the toys as happy as a clam. But you were saying that this cop. But this, so he's a black individual. He has value. He, so they introduced him with, oh, he has a court case. He murdered his best friend. Black, social star, all on media presence, found innocent. And then decided, was like, well, with all this, I'm going to join the cops. Yeah. Became a cop. Finished his rookie year, going through all this. And it's like, Okay, so I mean, I'm still watching the show. Me and my wife, we like it. It's it's good. It's not exactly what cops are, but yeah. it's still it, it goes into what we're talking about. DEI. It really touches on diversity, equality, and it's like. So I want I want to finish this value? out because we've only got a few seconds left. But my favorite thing is, have you seen the Morgan Freeman's interview and his opinion on, on Black History Month? On Black History Month. I think we, I know we've talked about we, this on, yep. And his opinion is that. Why do we have a Black History Month? Why do we have a Black History Month? Why am I black and when why is are white, you white History Month? Why are we not just people? Mm -hmm. And to say, state that, why are we? black people and white people and this people and that people. Why aren't we Americans? Why is there a diversity? Because I got to tell you, there is no fucking gaps when you're in the military. Oh, no. I don't it care. is all just, we're just fucking soldiers. We're just fucking airmen. 
It doesn't matter if you're from a small racist yep. town. It doesn't matter if you're from a big fucking city. We're all bleeding the same We're blood. We're all bleeding the same blood. All right. 